Hey, Joey here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of ways to cut out images in Photoshop. Let's go. Some of the techniques in this tutorial are pretty brand new. We're gonna be using Photoshop CC 2022 in this video. And if you wanna follow along or try these techniques out for yourself, you can download all of the unsplash photos used in the tutorial for free. Just follow the link in the description. The first technique we're gonna talk about is painting directly onto an image mask. Now, an image mask is a feature of Photoshop that you're gonna be using quite a bit once you get the hang of it. Here's how it works. Let's say we have this picture of this really cool looking woman and we've got a picture of a baby. And as is so often the case, you wanna put the baby's face onto the adult's face. So what we need to do is remove the parts of the image that we don't want so we can just keep the face. So what I can do is use the eraser tool and I can just start erasing things. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger and just start erasing parts of the image that I don't want. This is one way actually to cut out an image, but there's a problem with it. If you look over here in the thumbnail for this layer, you'll see that I've actually deleted the pixels from that layer. And once I get too far you know, down the road here, I'm not gonna be able to undo that. This is a destructive way of removing pixels and it's not ideal. I wanna be able to keep those pixels and just hide them. So if I change my mind, I can go back and fix things later. So let me show you how to do that. What we're gonna do is make sure that we have this baby layer selected and we're gonna come down here and click this little guy. This little guy adds a layer mask and it's a certain type of layer mask called an image mask. You'll see right now that in the thumbnail you have a completely white frame for the image mask. So watch this. With the image mask selected, I'm gonna choose the brush tool with B and then I'm gonna change the color from white to black. I'm gonna increase my brush size a little bit. And now I'm going to paint directly on this image mask with a black paintbrush. The effect it's gonna have is it's going to look like I'm erasing pixels. But now look over here. You'll see that what is happening is I'm actually painting a black and white image that is being applied as an image mask. And an image mask works by hiding the pixels that you've painted black and revealing the pixels that you've painted white. And of course, that means that if pixels are in between white and black, they're gray, then they'll be transparent. And this is very, very helpful. I'm gonna undo this and then what I'm gonna do is actually fill this image mask with black. And you can do that by hitting D to set the default black and white colors in Photoshop. And then I can hit Command Delete to fill with my background color. And so now I have this layer with a baby face and the image mask is totally black, meaning I don't see any pixels. So if I grab my brush tool and I'm using a white color, I can now paint in exactly where I want the image to show up. And what's even cooler if I undo this is I can soften the brush. So let me come up to my brush settings here and change the hardness down to zero. So it's a nice soft brush. Now when I paint, you'll see that it's feathering in the image. Now it'd be nice if I could first line up the image so that when I paint it in, it's sort of in the right spot. But I have this image mask on there. So what I can do is hold shift and click it. It will temporarily disable that mask without getting rid of it, it's really handy. Then what I can do is change the opacity of this layer down to say, I don't know, 75%, and I can just sort of line up and maybe even scale this thing down a little bit so that it fits on the woman's face. Now I'll just raise the opacity back up and I'll re-enable this layer mask here. Then I'm gonna grab my brush tool with B and I'm just gonna start painting in this layer underneath. And you can see you have all of this control. Good God, this is really ghastly and horrifying. I love it. Uh, and so you can see I've sort of painted in an area here that I didn't want. So what I can do is hit X. X will swap my foreground and background colors. So now I'm using black and I can just sort of gently come in here and try to get really precise with the pixels I'm keeping, all right? And obviously this composite uh, isn't quite perfect yet. We'd do some color correction if this was for real, but hopefully you can start to see the power of using image masks. You can get really, really precise with exactly which part of the image you're keeping. Now, real quick, before we move on, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and please hit the like button on this video if you've been learning a lot from it. Thank you. Next up, we have the pen tool. And the pen tool is probably the most precise way that you can cut something out of an image in Photoshop. Here's how it works. We're gonna come over and grab the pen tool. 
Now, the first thing I recommend you do is actually change one setting in Photoshop to make the pen tool easier to use. And here's why. If I grab the pen tool and I start using it, you'll see that it sets points right at the tip of this icon that Photoshop is giving me. And it's pretty precise, but I think it'd be easier if the cursor was something that was designed a little more for accuracy. So what you can do is come up to the Photoshop menu, go to Preferences, Cursors. And what you wanna do is set other cursors to precise. The paint cursors, you want the normal brush tip because that will show you exactly how big the brush size you're using is. But for other cursors like the pen tool, I prefer the precise icon. And this is what it looks like. It's now a little crosshair. And especially when we're zoomed in really, really close, it makes it a lot easier to lay down very precise points. Now, here's the trick with the pen tool. You click to set your first point, you click to set your second point, and then you drag. And as you drag, you'll see I'm creating a Bezier curve. And this lets you get very, very precise with exactly the path you're making to cut out whatever object is in the image. Now, right here, you'll see I've got this little bump sticking out of the shoe, and I'm, I wanna make sure I get that. So here's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna make sure that this Bezier curve matches the top part of the shoe. Then I'm gonna hold the Option key, and when I do that and I drag, you'll see I've broken the Bezier handle. This now lets me tell Photoshop kind of what direction I'm gonna go next. So I'm sort of giving Photoshop a hint that next I'm gonna put a point here, and this is gonna basically let me get really, really precise. Now you'll see here, I've kind of screwed up. I didn't put the point where I want it. That's okay. If I hold Command, my cursor changes to a white arrow and I can then click and drag and move that point after the fact. Then I can just keep going, hold Option to break the, uh, this is called the tangent. I can break that to kind of help me sculpt the exact path I want. And you'll see that this is very tedious. So I'm gonna speed this next part up. Now, I want you to notice as I'm setting points, I'm also moving the canvas as I work. And that's really easy to do. Just hold the space bar and your cursor changes into a hand and then you can click and drag to move around. Using the pen tool is something that takes a lot of practice, but after you've done it for a while, you almost have an intuition about how it's gonna behave and where to put the points and where to drag the Bezier handles. I promise you, you're gonna get really good at this. All right, our path is complete and you can see that in some areas I was able to get away with less points and then in some areas I, I needed a lot more. But in the end, that's the beauty of the pen tool is it gives you the control to be as precise as you need to be. Now, how do we turn this path into a mask so that we've cut out the shoe? There's a couple of ways to do this. One, we can go to this paths tab over here and you'll see that we now have a work path in there. Anytime you use the pen tool and create a closed path like this, it's gonna create what's called a work path. And so I can then hold command and click in there and it will create a selection around the path. Now I can go into layers and I can click the layer mask button and there we go. Now we've turned our pen tool path into an image mask. And because it's an image mask, we can do things to it that we would do with any image. So I can use my brush tool and paint black, white, or gray pixels wherever I need. I can even do cool things like this. I can unclick this little chain icon right here. And what that does is it disconnects the image mask from the image itself. And it lets me do things like this. I can go to filter, for example, and I could grab a Gaussian blur. And I could actually just blur the image mask without blurring the image underneath. So if I wanted to feather the edges of the mask, I can do that really, really easily that way. But actually, when you're using the pen tool, I think there's a better way to make a mask. Instead of making an image mask, we can make what's called a vector mask, and here's how you do it. Make sure you've got your path selected and click on the layer that you'd like to apply the mask to and come down here, but hold Command when you click it. You'll see that now the mask that was created looks a little bit different. This is a vector mask. And what's great about this is that now I could zoom in here. I could make sure that my vector mask is selected and I can hit the A tool to grab the direct selection tool. You'll see that the vector mask has shown up here and if I kind of click and drag like this, you can see some of the points. If I grab one of those points and move it, I can actually change the mask whenever I want after the fact in a non-destructive way. And this is really, really handy if you're doing detailed work like this. For example, if I needed to come in here and fix this area, I could just come in, grab the point I need, and adjust it just like that. There's also some cool features that you have with vector masks. If you click the mask and you have the properties panel open, you'll see that you can actually feather those masks using this little control right here, just like that. 
There's a lot of other powerful kind of nifty features with vector masks, but this is the basics of it. And hopefully it's already showing you another way to think about cutting things out in a non-destructive way. Okay, now we're gonna get into some of the ridiculously cool ways that Photoshop, especially in recent years, has given us to be able to select things and cut them out of images. And the first one I wanna talk about is the object selection tool. So first of all, where do you find it? By default, it's not easily accessible in the interface, so I'll help you fix that. But you can actually find it in this little menu here that shows you all of the tools that are kinda of hidden away. And here it is way down here at the bottom, object selection tool. But what I'd like to do, because I use this tool a lot, is I'd like to make it more accessible. So the way you do that is you go up to Edit and you go down to Toolbar. And now we can customize the toolbar over here. And we have the Quick Selection Tool and the Magic Wand Tool. These are really helpful selection tools and I think that that's a good place to put the Object Selection Tool. So if I scroll down on this right column, I can see it here at the bottom and I can just drag it where I want it. And now we're good to go. So now I can find that tool over here. And once I select it, you'll see these arrows start chugging away up here. What's happening is in the background, Photoshop is using the Adobe Sensei engine, which is sort of a AI machine learning tool built into a lot of Adobe apps these days. And it is trying to figure out where the objects are in this image. Once it's stopped moving, I'm ready to go. And what happens is with this tool selected, as I mouse over, various pieces of this image, you'll see that it's actually already created masks for every individual strawberry. This is pretty crazy. So let's say we wanted to do something simple like change the color of some of these fruits. Okay, so I can click this and then it creates a selection for me. And let's just pick a few other ones. I'm holding shift and let's say that I, it turns out I didn't want to select that one. I can hold option to remove that selection. So this is a really easy way of working. Great, so there we go. What I'd like to do now is I'm gonna create a new layer and I want this selection to be a layer mask on my layer. So I'm gonna come down here and click this. Now what I could do is I could pick a color, let's say this sort of cyan color. I'm gonna hit Option Delete to fill this layer with it. And you'll see that it's filled it only in the areas where I use the object selection tool to pick the strawberries. And now maybe I could change the transfer mode of this layer to color. And now we have these interesting looking strawberries. Now you'll see that the edges can get a little gnarly here. And so let me show you how to clean that up. I'm gonna get rid of this layer mask because we're gonna make a new one. I'm gonna hold control or you can right click and I'm gonna say delete layer mask. Then I'm gonna turn this layer off. Now let me go back to my object selection tool and let me pick some strawberries again. Now that I have picked them, I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna click on Select and Mask. We'll talk more about this tool in a little bit, but for now, all you need to know is that Select and Mask gives you a whole bunch of tools to refine the mask that any of these tools create. So if I zoom in here, you can see that the edges are pretty crispy. I'm gonna come over here under Properties and turn down the opacity of this blue layer, which is showing me basically how the image is being cut out. It's handy to scrub back and forth sometimes to really see the detail that's being lost. You could see these little wispy hairs on the strawberry and they're not really coming through. And it's gonna be impossible to get all of that detail automatically with this tool, but you can get pretty close. I think the easiest thing to do would just be to soften this edge a little bit. So down here in the global refinement section, there are some great options to help clean your mask up. So smooth will sort of just try to get rid of some of these gnarly edges. If I crank this all the way up, you can see that it kind of fuzzes the edge out a little bit. So we don't really want that, but you can also feather your mask and you can see that you can feather it, you know, all the way up to nothing basically, but I'm just going to feather it just a little bit, you know, maybe a, maybe a pixel or two. Uh, and then let me play with the smooth and see if that makes it feel any better. It does kind of help a little bit, right? And so now, if I apply that image mask to this layer and turn this on, we have a much more natural result. So you can sort of mix and match these tools to get the result you want. And just to show you how quickly this tool can work, I'm gonna do another color right now. Let me just fill this with green. Let's turn it off. Let's grab our object selection tool and just pick a few more of these. And then I'm going to go to select and mask and I'm just going to use those same settings. So I had a feather of about one, maybe 1.2. I smoothed it a little bit, hit okay. 
and then come up here and apply that and turn this to color mode. And there we go. So this object selection tool is incredibly powerful. It's one of the newer features in Photoshop and I highly recommend you get comfortable using it. Next up, we have the quick selection tool, which is really, really handy for just grabbing a quick selection when you don't need things to be pixel perfect. The way this tool works is you come over here to your quick selection tools and just make sure that you have this one picked. And then I'm gonna zoom in and I'm going to increase my brush size a little bit using the right bracket key. And you can see the size of my brush here with my icon. And then I'm just gonna start painting on the part of the image that I would like to be selected. I'm just trying to get this top deck of this boat here. I don't want the sides, I don't want this edge, I don't want these sides, I just want the top deck. And I can zoom in and I can just paint the areas that I want, I can make my brush smaller. And it would just keep adding to the selection. Cool, now I don't want the rope and so what I can do is make my brush a little bit smaller hold option and get rid of the rope. And you can see as I paint, it looks like Photoshop is kind of grabbing too much detail, grabbing areas of the image that I actually wanna keep. But when I let go, it refines that edge. And then I, I can always go back in here and kind of tell it, no, I did wanna keep that part. So it's a little bit of a back and forth process, kind of painting things in that you wanna keep, painting things out you don't wanna keep, and then helping Photoshop understand between the two. And so now in probably under a minute, we have a pretty decent selection here. And so if we wanted to say color correct this, we could come down here to the adjustment layers panel, grab a curves, and then we can adjust just that section of the photo really, really easily. And because we're doing something subtle like color correction, you don't really need to have the pixel perfect result that you might if you're cutting something out. There's also some smart selection tools built into Photoshop. Some of them are kind of new and I want to show you a couple of them just so that you know what options are out there. So let's say that you'd like to replace the sky uh, in this image with something a little bit prettier. Well, you need to remove the sky from this image. There's a lot of ways you could do that, but built into Photoshop CC 2022, there is actually an option under the select menu to select the sky. And again, this uses Adobe Sensei to try and figure out what the sky is. And in about two seconds, it created what looks to be a very accurate mask for the sky. And so to check it, why don't I come up here to the sky layer and I'll turn it on and then I will apply the mask. That's pretty crazy how accurate that is and took no time at all. And of course, we could refine that a little bit. We could blur this image mask a little bit. Uh, we also could have gone into the select and mask tool like we did in the previous section and refine the edges there. But even just with this one click solution, I was kind of blown away with how well it worked. There's a, another selection tool that is pretty new and pretty cool and I wanna show it to you and it probably has fewer use cases for the average person working on videos and, and doing animation and design in that sense, but it could be useful and it's good to know that it's there. If you go up to the select menu, you can now select a focus area. And when you're working with the tool, it gives you this sort of rough approximation of what part of the image is in the focus range you're setting here. So if I pull this slider back, you'll see that I'm essentially creating a selection based on a certain focal plane that Photoshop is using Adobe Sensei AI technology to figure out which parts of the image are in that focal plane. So if I want more of the image to be in the selection, I can just increase the focus range. And so if I'm happy with that, I can then say, okay, and now I have a selection just in the areas that are in a certain focus range. Now, why is that useful? Well, let's see what we could do with that. With this selection active like this, I can come down here to the adjustment layer menu and let's just grab a curves adjustment layer. Now, because I had a selection active, it automatically created an image mask for that adjustment layer. So now I can click on this curves icon, which will open up the curve in my properties menu here. And then I can adjust the curves. So let's say we just wanted to sort of brighten her face up a little bit in the area that's focused, right? So now it's almost as if there was an extra light kind of brightening her face. Now, of course, you're seeing this hard edge, which doesn't look right. So what we're gonna do is select that image mask and I could go up to filter and I could blur it, but I wanna show you a cool thing. You can also come over to properties and with an image mask, you can also feather that using the properties panel. And so by feathering it, it looks a lot more natural and basically we've been able to selectively 
apply curves to a part of the image just based on focus. So this is probably not something you're gonna be using all the time, but it is a very cool feature and it may come in really handy when you need to cut things out based on their focal distance. I hope you've learned a lot so far. And if you really wanna learn Photoshop, check out Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed, part of the School of Motion core curriculum. And if you're already comfy with Photoshop, but don't feel confident about your design skills, check out Design Bootcamp, which will teach you everything you need to know to start designing beautiful storyboards and style frames. Links are in the description. And now we get into the Select and Mask tool, which is, to be honest, what I use 90% of the time these days, it's gotten so good, it's so fast, it's an incredible time saver. So let's say that we would like to cut out this skateboarder. Well, you now know a bunch of ways that you could do it, but here's probably the coolest way. Now, as long as I come over to my tools and I have either quick selection tool or magic wand tool selected, it doesn't matter which one, I get these two options up at the top, select subject, select and mask. So first, click select subject and Photoshop through the magic of Adobe Sensei knows that this is the subject of the photo somehow, don't ask me how, I don't understand it. And that selection looks pretty darn perfect already, but just to double check it, let's go into select and mask now. And so now I can see a few issues with the selection. Down here, this piece of the sock didn't get included, and so it's really easy to fix that stuff. So over here in this panel, you have some different tools. Now this top one is the quick selection tool and it basically just lets you paint areas of the image you'd like to keep. And then once you let go and you quit painting, Photoshop figures out what it thinks the selection should be now. Now you can see that there's some schmutz over here and yes, that is the technical term. So what I could do is grab this quick selection tool and hold option to tell Photoshop to exclude these pixels. And sometimes that's all you need to do. That seemed to fix the problem, but as we'll see in a minute, sometimes you have to do things a little bit more manually. It also looks like the edge of the skateboard is being excluded here. I'm gonna turn the opacity down a little bit and you can see that in this case, the reason that's happening is that you can't actually see the edge of the uh, skateboard against the sky. So what I'm gonna do is some good old fashioned manual paint work. And if you wanna be really precise, you're gonna use this tool. This is just the brush tool. And I'm gonna zoom in really close I can kind of faintly see the edge of the skateboard and I'm just gonna paint it in as best I can. And when I go too far, I'll hold option and erase. There we go, that looks great. And then I'm just gonna quickly kind of move around and check the edges. When you're cutting things out in Photoshop, the edges is usually where you're gonna find the sin. You can see that in between the finger, this area didn't get cut out. So I'm gonna grab my quick selection tool up here and I'm gonna hold option and just tell Photoshop I don't want those pixels. Now let's talk about this bright highlight that you're kind of seeing around the edge of the skateboarder. If I turn the opacity all the way up to 100, it's very obvious, especially right here. What's going on is this skateboarder was shot on an extremely bright background and so when you cut them out, it's gonna be really hard to put them on a dark background and have it look natural because you get these bright edges where the light from behind him wraps around and falls onto his shoulder, onto the bottom of the skateboard. And you can try playing with some of these global refinements in this tool. For example, if you use shift edge, I can actually shift the edge of my mask out or in just by moving this back and forth. So if I shift it in, yeah, it does help a little bit, but if I go too far, you can see that I start eroding, you know, his butt, which we don't want. So what I'm gonna try to do is just keep it really subtle, just to get as much as I can out of it. Like maybe something like that, just minus 17%. It helps a little bit, but what's really gonna help is down here, the decontaminate colors tool. I'm gonna zoom in on the shoulder so you can see what it does when I click it. What it's doing is it's looking at the pixels on the edge of the mask and it's kind of painting those back in over the edge pixels. And what that does is it helps minimize the effect of light wrap. That's a compositing term that we talk about in our, our class VFX for motion. But it's basically just the light from behind a subject wrapping around to the front of it. And so just so you can see before and after, let me zoom out for you. If I turn this off, if I turn it on. Makes a huge difference, especially down here. And so now, because I've used decontaminate colors, it's actually adding pixels to my artwork. And so what I can do now is hit okay. 
and you'll see that we have the original skateboard image down here and it's turned off and then we have this new one that has a mask on it. And let me show you something crazy. If I hold shift and click on the mask to temporarily disable it, you'll see that the image looks strange. All of these extra pixels have been added to the edge but when you turn the mask on, it looks natural. And this is how you're able to get really clean cutouts with good edges. And if I wasn't talking so much, that wouldn't have taken very long. Now let's look at a trickier example. And I, I picked this photo because she has very wispy hair and it's dark in some places and it's light in other places. And it's kind of a worst case scenario when it comes to cutting out images. So let's try the same thing. Let's hit W to bring up the quick selection tool. Let me make sure this layer is selected. Then I'm going to go and click select subject. All right, Photoshop once again, freaking me out, knowing exactly where the subject is. Now we click select and mask. All right, so right away I can see some issues. Down here we've got the ground in the selection that we don't want, we need to take care of that. Now I generally try the quick selection tool first to see if just telling Photoshop which pixels to exclude if it will kind of do the work for me. So I'm gonna hold option and I'm gonna paint around underneath the skateboard and see what happens. Then I'm gonna paint back in on the skateboard and see if it can be smart enough to keep the pixels that I want. All right, so Photoshop is struggling with this. So I'm just gonna hit undo. And a lot of times when you have super dark areas like this and super bright areas that are basically the same color as the thing next to it, you're just gonna have to do some manual work. So I'm gonna grab the brush tool and I'm just gonna manually paint these things back in. I should also point out that I am using a Wacom tablet, which makes this kind of work so much easier. Okay, so we fixed the bottom part and now we can look at some of the other problem areas. It looks like part of her hand is missing. If I turn the opacity down on this blue layer, you can see that there are some knuckles over here. And again, it's probably gonna be quicker and easier to just take my brush tool and just paint those back in. I could then grab the quick selection tool and see if that'll help me get rid of this area in between her fingers. So I'm holding option and I'm just painting in this area. All right, that's looking pretty good. And then the last area is the hair. Now, you can see that there's some really thin pieces of hair here, and details like that are really nice to keep if you can. If I turn the opacity of this blue layer back up, you'll see that a lot of that disappears. And so to keep that stuff, there's a really cool tool built in to select and mask. It's over here, and it's the Refine Edge Brush tool. And what you do with this tool is you paint along edges where there's hair or really fine detail, like here. And you can see that it brought back some of that hair detail. Now it's a little bit easier if I turn the opacity down so I can find some of these hairs, right? You can see back here there's some, some pixels, really thin hair detail back there that's getting lost. So if I just kind of paint down there, bring some of that back. And this tool is incredible. It's really, really powerful. And it's little details like that that can really help sell a composite, keeping those little hair wisps. Now this is interesting. Here you've got dark hair against a light background. It's gonna be a lot easier for this tool to bring that stuff back. But you've also got light hair against a light background. You know, for example, there's a little wisp under her arm here that basically gets completely lost. So let's see what this tool can do. All right, so in this case, that tool isn't gonna cut it. I can try the hair that's, uh, that's up here higher up to see if it can keep any of that. My guess is it won't work. Oh, well, I got a little bit of it. Yeah, but it's not really working and that's pretty typical. That's simply because there's not enough contrast between the hair and the background, plus the rest of this hair is dark. So it seems like it's gonna be a heck of a lot of trouble to get those blonde hairs to stick, but that's okay. We can probably just live without them. But we've got a lot of detail back just from using the Refine Edge Brush tool. And now I wanna point out some of the other issues I'm seeing. I'm seeing some weird edges along the calf, along the sock. And I could go in and fix those manually, but I'm gonna try some of these global refinement tools now. So the smooth tool basically looks at the edge of your mask. I am gonna grab my brush tool and just fix this one little problem area down here, which I think I can just easily fix. But then I'm gonna go into the smooth tool and I'm gonna crank it up all the way just to see what happens. And you can see that it's softened the edges way too much, but it does help smooth out um, little imperfections like that. So when I have it at zero, you can see kind of here, it gets a little gnarly. And if I turn that up even to just like 10, it smooths that out really nicely. Now it's also gonna smooth out areas that you may not wanna be smoothed out. So you do have to kind of play with this. And you know, the rule of thumb is use it just the minimum amount necessary. 
So even a setting of one or two is going to smooth out those edges. I could also feather it a little bit. I could shift the edge in a little bit or out a little bit and see if that helps. Maybe going in a couple of percentage. I don't want to lose any of that hair detail. And then the last part is using decontaminate colors again. And when I click this, wow, look what it did to the hair. It's pretty crazy. And it looks pretty natural. Uh, you know, there's some kind of schmutzy stuff going on here. So what I can do now is play with the amount setting. If I bring this all the way down to zero, you'll see it looks like this. If I bring it up to 100, it looks like this. But in the middle, it looks a little more natural, right? It keeps some of the color, but it does keep some of the backlighting. But it kind of helps avoid a lot of the artifacts. Now, I am seeing something weird here with her arm. And so I'm just going to quickly go in and, and just paint that back in. Cool. And that looks pretty good to me. There's a few little other problem areas that I might, you know, if I was really doing this for a client, I might go in and fix. But uh, this is pretty darn good uh, for our purposes. So I'm going to hit OK. And so now we have this perfectly cut out skateboarder. If I turn the original image back on, I want to show you how clean this is. I can move this and you can see that it basically would fit perfectly anywhere in this photo. Even the hair detail looks really, really great. And if I did some sort of effecty thing, like let's say that I uh, made a new layer and I picked some color. I don't know. Let's pick like some interesting kind of purple color, pink color. And then I can set this to color mode. You can see how easy it is to separate her from the background and treat the background differently and, you know, put a levels adjustment layer on this and really darken it so that you can really make her pop a little bit. You can do a lot of cool stuff and the selection is so good. Um, you know, if you really push the background, you might see some little problem areas like there that you'd have to fix. But for doing this in just a few minutes with hair and all of this detail, it's pretty incredible what that tool can do. Next up, the color range selection. And this is really handy if you need to isolate or remove or tweak part of an image that has a specific color. So in this example, we've got a red barn and we've got all of this green foliage, but it's kind of green. It's also kind of yellow. Uh, we've got this fence that I really would like to avoid trying to cut out by hand. That seems like not a fun time. So what I'm going to use is a tool up here in the select menu, select color range. Now, one thing you need to know about this tool is that it's really helpful to change the selection preview to something useful. So if I set this to, say, grayscale, then now it's showing me the areas that are selected, which currently are these really kind of muddy gray white pixels up here. Black means it's not selected. And so what I can do is sort of click around and I'll figure out, OK, th that's where a tree is. So let me click on a tree. And now you can see this is the selection range of the image and this fuzziness dial here is basically telling Photoshop how close to the color I clicked to select, right? If I go all the way up, it selects a lot of pixels I don't want it to. So you kind of dial that in until you find the right amount. Now, there's also, I know, some grass down here if I change the selection preview to white mat. You can see now it's it's showing me the pixels that it's keeping and everything else turns white. If I change it to black mat, it's showing me the pixels it's keeping and everything else is black. It was easier to see on the white mat. And so now I want to include this green color too. So I'm going to click on this little plus icon over here with the eyedropper and click in there. And so now it's added another selection. And then I can also click on this tree. I could then click minus and click on the barn. And you got to kind of play around with this to, to find the exact right combo of clicks and settings to get what you want. But this is decent. And I can also play with the fuzziness a little more to see if maybe bringing that up a little bit helps. Now, I would like to exclude the fence. And so I can just click minus, click on the fence. And that gets us pretty close. All right, let me turn the fuzziness down a little bit. And you can see that you have to tweak this a lot. But now if I hit OK, I have a very detailed selection based on that color. So now what if I add an adjustment layer, say hue saturation, and it has that layer mask on it. Now I have control over just those colors and you can you can see sort of the power of this, right? And if I want to include these trees which weren't selected, this is an image mask. And so thinking back to the very first thing I showed you, I could grab a brush with a white color. I could scale it up and I can just paint right on that image mask 
to bring those pixels back into that adjustment layers image mask. And you can do this really, really quickly. All of these areas down here that the filter missed, I can just paint those in as well. So you can see how much faster this is than trying to do this manually and trying to make a mask for something like tree foliage is not something I would wish on my worst enemy. Actually, that's not true. I would wish that on my worst enemy. And just as an example of how you can combine these techniques now, if I click on the boat layer and I go to select color range and I pick this blue um, and I don't really want the mountains as much. I really just kind of want the blue water. So I'm going to try really hard to just get those areas. I'm doing the same thing I did in the last example. I'm using the plus eyedropper to add colors. I can use the minus to exclude colors. And that's pretty good. And if I hit OK now, I've got this really detailed selection. And so now what I can do is hit W to bring up my quick selection tool. And with a selection already made, click select the mask. And so now you can see this is the selection that the color select tool gave me. Um, let me change the color so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on here. I'll just pick a bright white color like this. Right. So this selection is really good, but it's also very, very crispy. I'd like to soften it a little bit so I could use maybe the smooth tool a little bit. I could use the feather tool a little bit. And just like that, I can use the global refinement tools inside of select and mask to make this better. And of course, I could also then come up here and use any of these tools too. I could use the brush tool and make my brush really, really big and hold option and just really quickly erase these mountains, right? Now, I actually don't want to do that and I'll show you why in a minute. If I hit OK, I've now got this really nice selection and I can go into hue and saturation uh, as an adjustment layer. And now if I change the saturation of this, I'm changing the color of the water. But what's really cool about this to me is that it also captured some of the color cast that's coming off of the water and reflecting up onto these mountains. And so uh, that's kind of why I liked leaving a little bit of the mountain selected because that that's actually what would happen in real life. The color of the water would sort of reflect light up onto uh, the surfaces up here. Um, and so anyway, so I just did this example just so you could see the power of mixing and matching these techniques to get the best mask you can get. All right, and the final technique that I'm gonna show you is a really powerful one that goes back probably decades in Photoshop. And sometimes it still is the best way to cut something out. So let's take a look at this photo. This as far as generating a mask using the pen tool or paintbrushes or even some of these automatic tools, um, it's kind of a worst case scenario. There is so much detail in the hair and it's hair. Hair is typically one of the hardest things to cut out. So there's a very cool trick and it involves using a tab that I find a lot of Photoshop artists don't use and that's the channels tab. Now every image is made up of channels and typically as video artists we're working in RGB mode so you have a red, a green, and a blue channel and I can see them by holding command and clicking three, four, and five. And you'll see that certain channels have more contrast than others. You can see that the red channel has a lot of brightness in her face because skin tones have red in them. But the blue channel is very, very dark. And this would be really, really useful as an image mask. And so this is one way that you can start to look at images, not just as the objects of the image. This is a woman with hair kind of headbanging, which I salute, but also look at it in terms of its value as an image mask or a mat as we call it in After Effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this blue channel and I'm going to click and drag it down here to this plus icon, which will create a copy of it. And I'm going to double click and rename this alpha. So now I have a new channel that I can manipulate in any way I want. So what I'm going to do is hit command L to bring up the levels adjustment. Now, what I want, I want the areas in her hair and her skin and basically anywhere where there is this woman, I want those pixels to eventually be white. Right now they're black, but we'll deal with that in a minute. And then everything else should be white, right? So what I want to do is create a black and white image mask using this channel. And so I'm going to start by trying to set all of these pixels that make up the woman to black pixels. So I can do that by taking the black input and moving it down until it looks right. But what's even cooler is I can click on this icon here and set the black level by clicking on the image. And so I'm going to pick a dark area uh, of her skin, maybe around her shoulder. 
and it sets the black level to there. Now you'll see there's a lot of pixels here that aren't black, but don't worry about that. We'll fix that in a minute. And then for the white level, I can use this eyedropper. Now, if you look really closely, you'll see there's a lot of little kind of noise down here. We don't want that. So I'm going to click down here. I'm just going to kind of click around in a few places until I find one. And that second click seemed to do it. A lot of that schmutz went away. And so now we have this really nice mask. Now notice some of these wispies down here disappeared. So I can back off on that white level just a little bit, right? And bring some of that back. And I have some noise down here, but we'll deal with that in a minute. So now I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to hit Command I to invert. So now it's really easy to see the areas that we don't want. And all I need to do now is take a brush, can make it big. I'm going to hold shift and use the bracket tools to make it a harder brush. And then I'm going to make sure I'm painting with black. So I'm going to hit X to swap my foreground background color. And I'm just going to paint this stuff out really quickly because we don't need that. And I want you to notice all of this great hair detail that we were able to keep using this technique. Like those edges are great. This is wonderful. Cool. So now we need to deal with these areas that should be white but aren't. And so I can just do some of the easy ones with the brush tool. Now, as we get closer to the edges, it's going to get a little bit risky to just try and do this by hand with the brush tool. So, for example, right here, it's going to be really tricky. So I'll show you another really cool tool. So in this menu here with all of the extra tools, you have the dodge and the burn tool. And O is the hotkey for those. It's a really handy one to remember. So dodge brightens pixels, burn darkens pixels. So we're going to use the dodge tool. And the way you want the dodge tool set is you want it to only affect highlights. And I usually set the exposure to 50 and watch what it does. With that tool selected as I paint, it brightens those dark pixels. But what's great is if I go over to this black area and I use it, it doesn't do anything. It only affects highlight pixels and these are already pretty bright. So it's going to work really well to just fill these in, but it's going to be a safer thing for me to use. Now, it's not really getting these as bright as I want, so I can up the exposure, set it to 100. And sometimes you have to go over areas a few times with this tool to get them to turn completely white. And the teeth are actually too dark to be affected by the tool. So I'm just going to grab a brush and I'm just going to be really careful and come in and paint those pixels in. And this is looking like a pretty outstanding mask. And so now what I can do is hold command and click. That will create a selection. I clicked right on the thumbnail for the alpha channel. Then if I click on RGB, it brings the image back up. But you can see how the background's red. That's because I have the alpha channel turned on for visibility. So I'm going to click the eyeball to turn it off and I'm going to go over to layers. Now I want to refine this mask using the great selected mask tool. So I'm going to hit W, make sure I have the quick selection tool active, go up to select and mask. And you may notice that it doesn't look any different. That's because I have the background color set to white from a previous step. So let's change that to something difficult because she was on a very light background. And so the darker the background we want to put her on, the more of that spill we're going to have to deal with. So if you look right here, these are those thin wispy hairs and those have more light going through them. And so they're lighter colored. And so it's a dead giveaway that, that we cut her out of an image. So you probably already know how we're going to fix it. First thing I want to do is I want to use the smooth tool just a little bit just to try and, you know, clean up some of these edges. We don't need to feather it, but I do want to decontaminate the color. So I'm going to click this button. Holy smokes, did that do a good job? Now it created a few interesting artifacts here. I can just dial that back a little bit, maybe 80% and look at the result we're getting. That is crazy. We're even keeping a lot of these tiny little hair details. So now I'll hit OK. And you can see now you could put her on any background you want. You can move her around and you are going to maintain all of that amazing hair detail, which maybe the selected mask tool could have done. But using channels, you just have so much control. You can really clearly see what you're going to keep, what you're going to get rid of, and you can get amazing results that way. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that we can teach you even more design and animation tips. Head to schoolofmotion.com to learn more about our interactive online curriculum and let our team know if you have any questions. Until next time.